Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. We're just fresh from lunch where we had so many great conversations with many, many of the attendees here. Yeah. And it's really coming through what a community this is of innovators. I, and what I loved is some people sitting together, sharing ideas on workflows. Helping and how, each other out. I, 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 again, I just love that when you come to an event, and I think that really carried over from the keynote this morning because the energy and just the customer use cases and the discussions were killer. And the demos were, I, I, I thought, the weaving DoorDash throughout was fantastic. A good thread, yeah. a good yeah. thread indeed. Well, speaking of all of that, who better to talk about yeah. the, the product innovation that's taking place at Alteryx than Suresh Vital, he is the Chief Product Officer here at Alteryx. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. It's another another Bostonian, here. so yeah, here we can, right. all, we can talk about Boston Sports, <laughs> or we can talk and, about products. And CUBE alumni. And he's, he's, yeah, he's, exactly, yeah. you should say that, exactly. <laughs> so, as Rob was saying, we saw a lot of exciting new uh, product innovations yeah. and, and enhancements in the keynotes today. Can, why don't you just walk us through them a little bit and yeah. tell our viewers a little bit more yeah, what happened. So, thank you for being here, firstly. Um, we've got 3,500 of our customers with us today and tomorrow, going to certifications, training, and knowledge sharing. We, I think we announced a lot of exciting stuff here at Inspire. I'll break the announcements down into two big kind of categories. Uh, certainly AI is a very resonant theme with our customers and certainly was a resonant theme with our product um, strategy as well. And so we talked a lot about how we are using AI to make the lives of our users much simpler, allowing them to do analytics better and faster, uh, and create more insights, frankly, across the business. So in the AI category, we announced Aiden Copilot, which I'm super excited about. You all saw a demo. Oh, the demo was really great. I That's mean, right. I, I was excited after seeing the demo. Right, <laughs> and DoorDash was literally kind of, he was writing his prompt in of what he wanted to do. And that's the power of Aiden Copilot. It is your personal assistant to help you build workflows faster and do better analytics. Um, and we think that's going to be a game changer because it's going to lower the barriers to entry in the use and getting value out of our products. We also announced in Auto Insights a series of AI capabilities, one called Playbooks, which allows, which kind of speeds up the ideation process and allows you to kind of think about the use cases and bring <laughs> products to life quickly uh, and bring ideas to life quickly, all the way to the process of building the workflow. It recommends to you what use cases you'd be focused on. And then, of course, we talked about um, in Auto Insights, we talk about magic pages and magic documents, which accelerates the analytics process. So, lots of announcements on AI side, and then cloud announcements as well, right? We made a series of cloud announcements, availability of designer cloud and Auto Insights, um, and location intelligence across all platforms, GCP, AWS, and Azure. We talked about all the use cases that they could do on the desktop, and they can now do it in the cloud with, for prep, blend, and transform with designer cloud. So we announced all of those uh, new capabilities as well. I'm super excited, as you can hear. <laughs> lots of AI announcements and lots of cloud announcements. Yeah, I, I, I think, again, it was such a good announcement, and I, I think what has been that other theme has been going through has been partnership and things. You had Databricks up there, and I, I, which, you know, again, it, it's, really that nexus between cloud and data and AI. Yeah. And, and I think to your point, AI and Aiden, which you announced last year but really brought to, brought to life this year, what are some of the use cases you see that people are going to really lean in on and yeah. use that? Because it's, it, I, I think that to me is what makes it real to people yeah. as well. So it, it, I think that's great how you phrased it, nexus of AI cloud and analytics, and, and that's really important for us. We want customers to be using these products to solve real world use cases. I see them using Aiden, for example, for the, our um, co-pilot capabilities to really accelerate the process of learning more around the product. It's not just about doing the workflow, but it's about bringing transparency to what they build and what the systems build. We've all heard about cases where the AI is hallucinating, or it's providing misinformation, or it's biased in some shape or form. We've kind of built it in a way where it's completely transparent. 
And so we want them to learn more about the workflow that they're building and what better way to do it than have the system coach you on what you should be doing. So I think that contextual help and the transparency is the use case that people are going to really grab onto and use it to bring new users into the family faster. Uh, we think a lot of the, what I would think of as core activities that you have to do, I think those are going to become faster. So you saw us talk about magic pages and magic documents. Yeah. I can see a whole host of users using it to create personalized reporting aimed at specific individuals inside the company, right? I think that's a use case that's going to take off. Yeah, I, I, think, I think so, and I, I think to, to your point, I think what was really interesting is it's not AI for AI's sake, and I, like you said, and I love the fact that you're putting guardrails in there, and I think yeah. you talked to that, and I thought I loved the little map and all of that, and the yeah. rerouting, because I, I swear Waze takes me the wrong way, just to <laughs> save me one minute, and I'm like, what, I've got to get off and get back on. I'm like, I don't mind that, I actually that like, I like, I like it. But I, I think to your point, it's like you want to trust it, right? Yeah. And I think that's, yeah. that's cool. And so, that was one of our, so we kind of are really thinking hard about how do you allow for responsible AI inside the business. So we want our users to be able to benefit from AI, but we want to put the guardrails in place as well so they get the right governance, they get the right protection, they're able to open that black box and look inside and understand what the model's proposing and if that's the right answer or not. Um, and so, we are trying to draw this balance between usability, because that's what we're known for, right? Alteryx products are amazing to use, easy to use, lower the barriers to entry, so we want, we want to balance between usability, access to AI. We don't, you don't need to be a data scientist to use our products, and we want you to be able to kind of build models and be able to use all of these capabilities. And third, we want you to be responsible and transparent, right? I really, I love that you don't have to be a data science to use it. I mean, that, that was really stressed today during the keynote that this is, use plain English. We, we, we can get you, we got you, we got yes. your back. Um, in terms of your overall approach, I mean, you are the head of product and, and you are supposed to be thinking innovative thoughts. That, that's what you get paid for. But how do you think about AI in terms of what you were just saying is that AI makes mistakes, it hallucinates, it, 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 it doesn't, you can't always trust it, it's not always ethical, it's biased. How do you think about these things, approach these things, and then lead a team to also have that um, perhaps right amount of skepticism yeah. when, when, they're, when they're creating new products? Yeah, you know, we're deeply uh, thoughtful about how we want to approach AI. We don't want to make this, we don't want to move too far away from our core ethos, which is about putting analytics in the hands of the business users who understand the business problems, who are starting to getting a better understanding of the data, but don't have all the tools that they need to be able to deliver insights to their business. So when we think about our, our problem statement, we always keep the citizen data scientists or the business analysts front and center and think about what are the problems these people are trying to solve, right? Are they, they're trying to do analytics faster, they're trying to solve for the data processing challenges, and they're trying to clean up a lot of these old processes that were put in place from 20 years ago. Right? AI can be helpful in each one of these areas, and so we do a lot of user studies, we run a design partner program, we've got about 50 customers at any given time providing feedback to all our early stage products, and they're providing brutally honest feedback to us and sharing where they think our proposals will work and equally where they won't work and what we can do differently. Right? So we run this through a, a process because this entire paradigm of AI-infused applications is new. And so we need to figure out how to bring workflows, the user experience, and AI together into one blended experience for those users. So we use the design partner program, and now we have them in private preview for a period of time where we get even more feedback and we get even wider adoption, and eventually we kind of put it in general availability. So we're constantly thinking about how does this impact the life of the user, and how does it allow them to do analytics better, faster, cheaper? Yeah, I, I think also, I, I think, Again, you guys started out on-prem, now you're moving to the cloud, you're making connections between the two. Why do the right work in the right place? Mm -hmm. And you're bringing certain features that take advantage of the scale of cloud as yes. well. It, it would seem that, I mean, again, some of the other announcements besides Aiden that you went into, you know, I'll, I'll give you, I mean, one that stood out to me, and just because um, I'm a nerd in this stuff, right, is that the metadata 
not only having to be in Mongo, but now you can be and put it in SQL Server yeah. for server, uh, you know, Altrix Server. And so things like that, what other, what other things should organizations be aware of beyond the Gen AI stuff that yeah. you were announced today? I mean, you brought a great one up, the, the availability of, it's been a long-standing request for us to make more databases available to, part, to play with uh, Altrix Server. Now we have SQL Server, where, another place where you can store your Altrix metadata in. We talked about the cloud availability, you brought that up as well, right? We were available on AWS, we're available on GCP and Azure. I think that's going to unlock a lot of usage for our customers. The third thing we talked about, which may have gone in, in all the news we announced may have gone, we talked about the security certification, the private data handling. So we think this is a really important capability that customers will need more and more of, which is, I'm going to design in your environment, but I'm going to run in my environment, where my data sits and, and, and where my data resides. And private data handling gives them exactly that capability. It allows them to run these workflows, these very complex workflows, without having to move the data. So in some ways it's bringing the analytics to where the data sits, as opposed to taking the data to where the analytics is. Yeah, I, I think we actually talk about that a lot, about bringing AI to the data. And you know, I, I think, again, when you start to look at where the data is, I mean, uh, there's a reason that there's two billion, that, you know, Databricks has $2 billion in revenue. I mean, Spark and things of that, Mongo and others yeah. that are up in cloud, uh, and you had Redshift and a number of other databases there that you're you know, connecting to and working with. And yeah. I, I think, do you see that a big piece of where organizations are really, because it's bridging that, yeah. it's bridging you know, from Excel spreadsheets all the way up to Redshift yeah. and Databricks, and, the data doesn't just sit in one place that's right. as well. And that's, that would mean, that to me is what, where the power of workflows comes in. 100%, and that's what we thought about, right? We want Alteryx to be available wherever you work. You're in Snowflake, and there's a lot of customers in Snowflake. We want you to be able to run this workflow in Snowflake and push down into Snowflake. You saw Adam Conway on stage there, the SVP of product for Databricks, and he talked about the partnership they have with us, right? 600 plus customers, hundreds of thousands of workflows running in Databricks. Why? Because we are deeply integrated in Databricks and we push right down into Databricks. Similarly, GCP and the BigQuery customers, Redshift customers. This ability to take these really complex, really articulate, sophisticated workflows down to where the data resides, I think that's a superpower that Alteryx gives our users um, that's hard to replicate. Suresh, what are you hearing here at Inspire? There's so many great conversations that are taking place in the hallway as well as also in sessions. What are some of the, the, the conversations that you're having with customers or partners that you're excited to go back to work on Monday and get started yeah, with? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, responsible AI is a topic that keeps coming up over and over again. Customers want to be able to do AI, but want to do it in a responsible, transparent way, and they want to understand what the playbook is. And we know that's changing quickly with all the announcements that are coming out of the foundational large language models, the hyperscalers, and the cloud warehouse vendors, right? And Altrix is a key player in that ecosystem, so responsible AI is a topic that comes up over and over again. The ability to innovate quickly, right? Our customers are looking to innovate fast, create analytical applications fast, deploy them to their end users quickly. That's a theme that keeps coming back up over and over again, right? So we, that's a topic that we talk about. This being able to run on desktop, in cloud, and in a hybrid requires our customers to think differently about their architecture, right? One customer said a really interesting thing to me. A financial services customer said, hey, you know what, Alteryx is kind of the platform we can bet on that makes it easier for us to change our decisions on everything else, right? So today we may be on Google, tomorrow we may be on AWS. Flexible. Alteryx still works, it gives you that flexibility, right? That's a topic that keeps coming up over and over again as well. Yeah, and I, I think that, that to us, because we, 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 we have a partnership with a company called ETR and we look at the data about where people have been building their, their next gen apps, their cloud native apps, and it really is 
actually gotten into balance about 50-50 between on-prem and in the cloud. And on-prem can mean colo and other things. And right. I know you work with MSPs and yeah. others as well. I, I think the partnerships to me, that, that's been the strength. And we had Infosys on earlier and they had won yeah. last year. And I, I think when you start to look at this, do you see the GSIs, the VARs and partners, they, they have to be an integral part of yeah. Bring, not only getting new customers, but bringing feedback into your organization. 100%. I mean, you saw Databricks on stage, Databricks, Snowflake, the hyperscalers, all, all really important partners for us. But then the Accentures, the PWCs, the Deloitte's, also important partners for us. Um, but we also have a whole host of emerging players who partner with us, like Fiddler and so on, who kind of are building innovations on top of the Altrix platform. One data point. We launched the Alteryx Marketplace about six months ago to give our partners the ability to build and deliver innovation on top of the platform. Fastest growing, most adopted capability we've delivered in our history. Right? So again, it shows you the energy the ecosystem has on wanting to build innovation on top of the Alteryx platform. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that to me is, is one of the, the killer pieces of it is that it, it is about innovation and where it makes sense. What, so what's next? You know, last word, what's next for Alteryx yeah. and where I you going? Yeah, I think we'll continue to make our products easy to use, right? That's a core philosophy, it's kind of the ethos this company is built on. We really want our end users to be successful with the product, we'll continue to do that. You continue to see our innovation in cloud scale, but along that, we know it's just a form factor thing. Designer and server continue to be big investment areas for us, and we'll continue to deliver those capabilities. And we've got a few things on generative AI that I can't talk about <laughs> right now that are coming that'll make it, I'll give a clue, it'll make it really easy for our users to build analytical applications. Right. Excellent. Suresh, we are on tender hooks, so we'll have to save it for next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suresh, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. It was great to spend time with both yeah. of you. Thank yeah. you. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Alteryx Inspire. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, for Rob Strecce. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology news, coverage, and analysis. <laughs>